Welcome to the first video on this channel, but it's not my first YouTube video. Let me give you a quick introduction of where I come from. Um, I just caught a fly. Warning. Since this is your first video on this channel, the intro is in fact rather lengthy. If you have an allergy against long intros, you are hereby advised to skip to 202 to proceed to the actual start of the video. We here at the Lettuce Craft channel do not take responsibility for any physical or emotional damage caused by long intros. A couple years back I decided to make a YouTube channel based around this video game called Realm of the Mad God and there was mostly gameplay footage. But then I decided to mix things up, you know, making memes, making vlogs. And then one day I decided to start doing like fan art, crafty stuff. And I threw that in there as well. So then I had this big pile of stuff all over the place and I decided, you know, I need to make a cut and change something. And this is this. I decided to make a channel based purely on, you know, my interest in crafting, building stuff, doing experiments, whatever. And in fact, I don't even know what it's called yet, um, but I'll figure it out as we go along. It just felt right uh, to mingle my passion for arts and crafts and stuff with my passion for the Tolkien universe and I'm gonna make Saruman stuff. Saruman! Your stuff is very nice. I decided to build Saruman stuff because I like steel. You know, I'm not sure what material Tolkien intended. He just says it's heavy and black. But knowing Saruman, you know, he's a, he's a steel kind of guy, uh, I imagine. So I'm gonna make it out of metal. It's gonna be very heavy, but it's gonna be epic. Now I know you don't care about any of this, so let's just start. Now obviously before I can start building this thing I need to have some sort of idea of how big it is and what kind of measurements I should use. And of course I looked in the movies first, took a bunch of screenshots here and the main takeaway is that this stuff is about Saruman's height. So just google that and um, you get how long the stuff should be. Okay let's see, how tall is Saruman? Well I think I'll just go with my height. I am about uh, 1 meter 70, so I just made a photoshop file that's 170 centimeters large, pretty big file. Now I'm just gonna go through these uh, measurements real quick, just in case any of you wanna build this thing. Uh, so you have the overall length, 170 centimeters, 34, 14.5, 111, 25, 2.55, 6.25, 8.25, 6 by 5, 9.5 and 9, 1 centimeter at the end, and the ring is about 3 centimeters. And now we just hit D for draw, and... Damn, those came out perfectly. And people say MacBooks are trash. Well, in case my plan wasn't obvious, I'm gonna do this one once and this one twice. And then uh, they're gonna be welded like that. Now I just need to stamp a nice template. And there we go. We're pretty much ready to move on to steel. First out of business, getting the materials. Now, we all know what one of my favorite places on earth is, the junkyard. And because I'm a bit of a cheapskate, that's probably the best place to start looking for steel. Now it's just a matter of luck. Not even the wise can foretell what the junkyard has in store. Feels just like coming home. Let's go. That's a that's a good ladder right here. We shall see. Well, time to dig through this pile, I guess. Could be what I need. I'll tell you what. That already looks pretty good. Well, I'd call that a success. Got myself a nice pipe here and then I have this sheet metal which is four millimeters overall cost me six bucks and I think in a construction store would probably have paid more so yeah and people say guys don't like shopping very untrue well we're on the road again <coughs> this time we're going to girlfriend's uh, dad's workplace he 
works in a, in a big metal shop and he gave me permission to look for something that I need mainly for the for the end of the stuff something I can you know put in the forge my dear camera woman forgot to film inside the actual thing but I got two of these big uh, bolt kind of situations and uh, they're kind of exactly what I need so that's perfect uh... these are ready to go so let's light up the old forge here and then we can take these to the anvil from the time that man first began to work metals and emerge into a civilized status there had to be a solid immovable object to resist the blow of a hammer to forge the steel you are nothing without an anvil you are pathetic you you need a nail 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 you you need a nail 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 you you need a nail 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 well, guess what? I just bought an anvil. <laughs> Was it a rash decision to buy a 250 euro anvil from just one picture in the offer? Well, yes. Uh, will I regret it? Uh, I don't know. Uh, in any case, it's a two hour drive and I'm gonna drive to, to pick it up. Now I even skipped the class just to get it. <gasps> Hell yeah. Just leaving Lecknitz and guess what guys? You see that? Oh shit. Better pay attention to the road. Don't wanna wreck that new anvil. <laughs> well I brought some support and um, we're gonna try to move it. here in the beautiful country of Brandenburg at my girlfriend's property where I cleaned up the old anvil a bit mounted it turns out she's a beauty from 1930 I'm about ready to light up the forge and uh, welded my material on a stick ready to start That concludes another step of the process. Um, now I'm just gonna have to cut it off, weld it to my rod, and it's all done. And that sort of concludes this chapter. Anyway, let's move on to the next component. My parents are always really pissed at me for getting metal dust everywhere, so they got me this party tent kind of thing to build into the garage.
I think I've taken these about as far as I can get it with a little cutting wheel. So now I'm gonna have to switch to a grinding wheel and refine the shape. I have no idea how I'm gonna do that because I can't get in there with an angle grinder. But as always, I figure it out somehow. Well, it's been about six hours now. I have all my basic shapes done. And I actually got that pretty far with my angle grinder as well. I was surprised by that. I think I can be pretty happy with what I have so far. Well, as you just saw, I filed the outline to near completion. Uh, now I'm gonna have to do the uh, bevel that's on the piece. I'm just gonna freehand it. Uh, it's gonna be a rounded bevel and it's not gonna, you know, make a knife edge. I'm gonna stop a little bit short, round it all over so it's nice and smooth. Should be fairly quick work and then I can move on from there. I don't know if I'm gonna regret this later, but I decided to uh, not keep that mirror kind of polish that brings a lot of the flaws out. And I used this kind of scotch bright pad to scuff up the surface again, make it matte. And I kind of just prefer this because it looks more uniform. I have no idea what I just told you, but you can forget about it. Slept the night over it. I don't like the finish anymore. Um, the council has decided that the finish they have on this piece should be matched on these as well. Kind of rough, but homogenous. This is all no problem. Uh, the only downside is that I wasted the entirety of yesterday hand polishing these, like six hours probably. But I guess failure is part of the process. I'm gonna touch these up with the angle grinder, wire brush. Should be pretty quick work. I think I said that yesterday too. Ah. Uh... Yeah, as you can see, worked like a charm. Got my little grain structure here, like on this piece. And this time I'm actually really satisfied and I'm gonna keep it this way, I promise. Next I'm gonna start preparing this pipe. I need to take this paint and zinc off. I need to remove some of the manufacturing marks. Uh, and I also have to cut it to length. Yeah, respirators and glasses are a great combo. Look at that. Hell yeah. Well, I'm out here on the forge again. I'm just gonna close up this end of the pipe real quick. That's where the crown gets mounted. 
and it should have like a nice point and that's what I'm gonna do now. Got a bit of a chimney effect going here. Cannot be healthy. <laughs> Completed. That was actually quite trivial. I'm surprised by that, but I'll take it. I received a nice. <coughs> Got a little present in the mail today. They even sent me a candle. Well, that's what I call a surprise. I actually ordered only three. I got four of them. I got them with candles. Now I don't know why but these candles are like really hairy. That's a bit weird. These are hella cheap on eBay these days. I don't know. I think they're out of style or something. I've never carved stone in my life before. I've honestly no idea what I'm doing. I really hope that I can manage to, to make an orb. It's probably not the easiest shape uh, either that a uh, rotational ellipsoid slash long sphere slash uh, symmetrical egg here goes nothing Well, that's what I call almost an egg. It actually carves better than I expected it to, but I feel like it's really easy to mess it up. I've made myself a little bit of a makeshift top stick. Maybe that helps me make it more round, but I'm not so sure. <laughs> Well, I was working really well all the way to the point that this happened. And I'm really sad, disappointed. I'm gonna try to epoxy it back together, but if that looks like ass, then I'm gonna have to start from scratch and hope that it doesn't happen again. Well, I'm gonna try it once again. This time around, I'm gonna try it the other way. I'm gonna have the piece mounted in here and I'm gonna have the angle grinder in my hand. Maybe that changes something. Um, I hope the glue up holds. I'll use this piece every now and again to make sure it fits. As you can see, we're not quite there yet. I'm a little scared that it'll pop off again, but there's nothing I can do other than try.
as you can see, I have a fit that's as good as it's gonna get. Obviously not perfect, because the steel is not perfect, but hey, I'll take it. Now I'm gonna uh, go through a couple grids of sandpaper, polish this side up before I flip the whole thing, glue this end in, so I can make it all symmetrical. Well, I present to you the Clamp Lathe 2020. Uh, I have no idea if that works, but the whole metal piece thing I was not able to get in line with the center of rotation or axis of this thing. the finished result and I don't know what to tell you but I don't think this could have come out any better than it is right now and look at those swirly swirls those are perfect okay so this assembly part is going to feature a bit more narration than before anyway here you can see me attach a nut to the end of the bottom spike of the staff uh, now this nut conveniently just fit perfectly into the end of the rod which allowed for a much easier connection of the two, as you can see here. After cleaning up the weld, the next step was to create that little ring at the end of the tip. Uh, my plan was to use a similar technique to the one I used on the marble egg to turn down a large washer in its diameter. This actually worked really well. Next I had to drill out the hole in the middle, which proved to be a much bigger challenge. Eventually we managed it with this big step drill, but my little drill press certainly had trouble getting the job done. Now given the subject of the video, it's no surprise that working with a ring for such a prolonged time can bring out a certain side in you. Alright, that's enough messing around. I welded the ring in place and cleaned it up with a round file and some sandpaper. Then it was finally time to start assembly on the crown of the staff as I like to call it. Now sadly this part of the project turned to a bit of a nightmare for me and you'll see that soon enough. I have no idea what I did here, because I certainly didn't do it here. Now just like before, there was a lot to grind for me here, which led to some minor complications. So I just set myself on fire. That's new. Oh god. Crisis averted. I'm trying to protect the marble ball by using some aluminum foil and some clay. I hope it works. Using a variety of tools, I cleaned up all of the welds as best as I could. Next, I prepared the upper end of the rod to accept the crown. The welding here was slightly better than before, but there still was a lot of cleanup to be done.
To attach the marble egg to the crown, I first sealed up one side with some hot glue. Then I injected some epoxy directly into that little gap using a syringe. From now on I had to be extra careful not to damage the marble. Then after one last pass with some scotch brite, I moved on to cold bluing the piece. This was another first for me as I've never used this stuff before. And naturally somehow I messed it up as you'll see soon. Here you can see me oiling up the blued steel and just how nice and black it looks afterwards. Additionally, after some failed epoxy experiments that I didn't show here, I went ahead and filled these holes a bit using some standard black nail polish. And as for that weird rust, I believe I left the cold blue on for too long, but some steel wool took care of that. And then I was finally done. <laughs> Yeah, I still can't believe I finally finished it. This was an intense build, let me tell you. I spent well over 200 hours on this project and that doesn't even include the time I took to edit this. Towards the end I pretty much worked 10 hour shifts just to get it done before uni started again, uh, which it didn't because of the whole pandemic thing, but uh, that's a different story. Anyway, overall I'm pretty happy with the project, even though I would do some things differently if I were to do it again. I certainly learned a lot from it though, so that's a win. Uh, overall I feel really proud to be the first and only fan to make Saruman stuff from actual steel and stone, uh, at least as far as I know. And I'd like to sincerely thank you for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed yourself and the video and any feedback is appreciated. So make sure to leave it in the comments below, especially when it comes to the video. Uh, you know, I'd love to get some pointers so I can improve the quality. I certainly know that there's room for it. And if you genuinely enjoyed this video and you're interested in what else I might build in the future, maybe consider subscribing. Uh, don't expect anything too soon though. It might take many months uh, till I have another video lined up. Right now I'm actually building a proper workshop from scratch uh, together with my family and that's really exciting for me and I'm focusing all of my energy on that right now to get it finished and I'll probably make some videos about the process but again that's gonna take a while. Anyway I think I took enough of your time, again thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the future. It really pains me to say this but I think after years of abuse it's time to finally retire the blue jacket. A moment of silence please for our fallen soldier. Okay, that was enough. <laughs>